everyone. It is February 16th and I am a few days late with the February Yarnable reveal video, but better than late than never, right? I'm wearing my Liana hat pattern, um, pattern, my Liana hat that I made. This was actually the first hat that I made of Hypnotic Yarn and it's in Hypnotic Yarns. This was a one of a kind two years ago when I started working with Cheryl and it was called Victorian Hairpin and it's actually worsted weight. And I love this color so, so much. And I had, whenever I finished knitting the hat, I had just enough to make this giant pom-pom with the rest of the yarn. And I really wish Cheryl could somehow figure out how to make this colorway again because I super duper love it. Isn't it beautiful? All right, back to February. So the February Yarnable, um, I don't have a box this month, <laughs> uh, but in your box, you got a scratch off coupon card. And so you scratch that off and it usually has some sort of percent off um, a total purchase. It may have free shipping. Um, I think those are it, just some sort of percent off and then, or free shipping. Also in your box, you got a glass peppermint stitch marker and these are from the Allery and she has a shop on Etsy and I will tell you a little bit more about that. These are really, really cute. So like I said, it was glass and on top and bottom, she has these really cute little beads. And then the, the top is a very large lobster clasp. If I had to guess, I would say it's probably like a 12 or 15 millimeter lobster claw. So that's going to easily fit on the majority of the needles that you will be using or as a, as like a progress keeper. Um, really cute. You can check her out by either, you can scan this with your smartphone or this website link along the bottom takes you to the exact same page over here. So this Let's Get Connected page has lots of links on it. The two that are most popular is um, a link to Ravelry bundles that have patterns that look really good with hand-dyed variegated yarn. Another popular link on this website is uh, What's Inside Yarnable. And that is where you will find links to all the extra um, goodies that you'll have. So you'll find a link for the Allery and you will find a link. There's another thing in your box that is Rosemary Peppermint Handmade Soap from Brianna Soap. I don't have a bar, which I will explain why in a minute, but your bar, um, like I said, it's handmade and her website is Brianna Soap, um, a website, not, she's not on Etsy that I am aware of, but she makes handmade, all organic, vegan soap. And Cheryl was saying that they smell amazing and she um, used one and it was awesome. The reason why I don't have a bar to show with you is that I am allergic to coconuts and coconut oil, especially um, whenever it's like put on my skin hives don't look good. And so I told Cheryl, um, unfortunately most handmade soap, well, all handmade soap that I've ever seen has coconut oil in it. So I can't use it. Um, so I told Cheryl that, you know, I wouldn't be able to use the bar so she could keep it, um, and do with whatever she needed to do with it. Um, but definitely check out Brianna soap. I think uh, what I'll probably do, I will order some to give to at the end of the year to, as teacher gifts and put it in a little bag or something like that. Um, I, you know, just something cute as a thank you to the teachers for dealing with my children all year. <laughs> um, so what else is in your box? You got 
a soft peppermint, which these are delicious. And most importantly, yarn. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I, in my mind, I just didn't forget about yarn, but um, going through the list. All right, so this February some month yarnable is called Sweet Confections. The base color here is this really soft blush pink. And then it just has hot pink, blue, and some red speckles. I was thinking these would be this would be super duper cute as socks. So that's what I was kind of thinking about. Um, but regardless, I'm going to wind up this beauty and start making something with it. I don't know what that something's going to be. It might be socks or it might be something completely different. Would it? Shana, I love hats, but I'm really thinking that it would make pretty socks. Anyway, so I'll be back in a little bit and so that you can see what it looks like knitted up. Hello, all right. So I have two corrections to make from my previous video a couple of days ago. First, the stitch marker per Etsy shop is the Hillside Allery, not the Allery, I think I said the Allery multiple times, but it's the Hillside Allery on Etsy. And I also looked at her listing and the clasp, because uh, I had said it's a fairly large clasp. She specifically says that these are big enough to hold needles up to six millimeter. Um, and so they're probably like 10 or 12 millimeter total. And so that you have plenty of room to like um, move it from one needle to the other. So I wound the yarn. Here's what it looks like wound. And I'm really loving this yarn. Typically, I'm not like a, a huge pink person, but the, the pale blush color just with the speckles knits up so beautifully. And I am incredibly excited about this project. So while I um, didn't do socks, <laughs> I decided to start a hat. One of, well, my main goal for 2020, my knitting goal for 2020, is to learn brioche. And so I, one of my 12 for 20, if you were in the hypnotic Facebook group, at the beginning of January, I had posted up suggesting to people to, as an encouragement, to pick out 12 patterns they wanted to make in 2020. One of my 12 that I wanted to make is a hat pattern that is by Dragon Horde Yarns and it's one, um, I actually have it here. Uh, it's called the Brioche Pussycat Hat and it's the kind that has like, you have little ears here and have, um, so you can see in the picture, which I, I love cats. It's not quite an obsession, but it's it's close. I love cats, so I've been wanting to make a hat, a, a cat hat, for a while, and I thought that this would be a great way to not only introduce myself to brioche, but uh, you know, to have a cat hat. And <laughs> um, her pattern calls for two different colors of fingering weight yarn uh, for the two color brioche. I cast on, and this pattern has three different sizes, small, medium, and large. I originally cast on for the small, um, and I was just to do one color brioche. And then I thought, oh my goodness, a fingering weight hat is going to take forever. So I decided to hold this double. So I'm pulling from both ends of my skein and I cast it on 88 stitches, which is what I normally cast on for a DK weight or double fingering weight hat. So just purely so that the hat would knit up faster. Um, this is twisted rib right here, which is always a really nice brim. And then uh, brioche. 
So like I said, in her pattern, she does call for a two color brioche. And I just decided to do one color to get, um, mostly to show off the yarn because look how beautiful it's knitting up. I super duper love it. And um, so in this hat, you you knit until the top and then you just Kitchener stitch across. There is no decreases and then you like tack ears. Um, brioche is not near as hard. Well, the basic brioche is not near as hard as I had created in my mind. So then uh, next pattern I'm going to do will be a little more complicated, maybe with some increases and decreases and do two colors. Uh, since I do want to learn, brioche is just so beautiful and I love that it's double sided. Um, so no matter how you look at it, it just looks really nice. I will say that I made one boo-boo on here. I realized right here, I purled instead of knitted and I didn't realize it until I was like more than an inch away from that. And normally I would have just dropped that stitch down and changed it, but I don't know how to do that <laughs> in brioche. I don't know how, if it's even possible to drop a stitch back that far. I mean, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and really times two, 18 rows away now from that error. And when I found it, I was probably about 10, 10 rounds away from the error. And I'm terrified um, to, to see if I can even drop it and drop that stitch and fix it because I'm definitely not going to pull everything out. So I probably just going to leave it. And then I realize on the other side, you can't see that mistake because it's in, um, instead of it being the, the knitted stitch on this side, on the wrong side, it's purled. So it kind of, you know, like caves in and you can't see that mistake. But then the issue is um, one of the setup rows was just a plain knit row right here. It's just a, after you do the twisted rib, you do one round of just knit. Well, on the other side, of course, you can't see the error, but then that's purled, which is not bad. It just, to me, kind of stands out. You know, actually, with it purled right there, it looks like a cupcake. That looks like the... Um, the liner and the, or you know, like the bottom of the cupcake and then the line and then the top of the cupcake. So that's not necessarily bad. Maybe I'll just, huh? did I make him another? Oh, I have another mistake. Oh my goodness. So now on this side, you can tell, I don't, I think that's a different spot. It, it totally is. Um, right here, I obviously messed that one up too. And you just can't tell on that side. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, I'm going to have to learn how to fix mistakes and that one is too far down for me to fix it too. <laughs> oh man. So that's two boo-boos. Um, anyway, but that's how the yarn is knitting up. I think it's beautiful and I'm super excited to wear this soon. It's knitting up quite quickly. So I have I'm sure that I'll have it done um, and maybe tonight or tomorrow. My husband's gone this week, so I have lots of knitting time to work on it. Uh, so it's more than halfway done and I'm excited. All right. I will see y'all later. Bye.